If you're a dungeon master and you've never had a player try to harvest the internal organs of a basilisk, remove the scales and lungs from a dragon, or any number of equally wonderful, wholesome acts of desecration and defilement to the corpses of foes, well, you just haven't been a dungeon master long enough because it will happen. And when it does, what are you going to do? The D&D core rules gives us no guidance as dungeon masters on how to adjudicate this very common practice of ripping out pieces of monsters and then trying to turn them into useful items, often magical. However, not to fear, because my team and I have created a lightweight rule set, reimagining the bounty of the land, that covers foraging and harvesting both plants and monster parts, and how to turn them into cool stuff the characters can use on their adventures. Now this month, DM Layer patrons at the $15 and above tier will get this rule set included with their other patron benefits, but you can also pick it up on the DM Layer store if you'd like. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to walk through the three basic steps of how this rule system works. Locating components, harvesting components, and crafting cool stuff, so that if you want to use it in your own games, you can. I'm also going to try to give you enough information here so that you don't have to buy it if you don't want to. But doing so will save you some time and having to sort out all the granular details yourself. Number one, locating components. Let's start with monsters. After the characters fell an enemy, they may spend one hour, this hour requires active work and cannot coincide with a short rest, to make an intelligence, arcana, or investigation check to determine what might be useful, depending on whether they are searching for magical or mundane components from the creature. Now, if the character already knows what they're looking for, they have advantage on this check, but they still need to roll to determine if they can find it undamaged. Now, the difficulty of the check depends on the way the creature was killed. If the creature is unconscious, a DC 15 check is required to determine if there are useful components. Because it is not dead, the creature has a 50% chance of regaining consciousness and immediately attacking the nearest character. Unless the character has a passive perception of 20 or higher, the character is surprised and the creature has advantage on its first attack. If the creature was killed by elemental damage, a DC 20 check is required. And if the creature was killed by bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage, the DC is 25. Now, of course, if the fatal blow dealt more than 50% of the creature's maximum hit points, the DC is 30 due to the intense violent trauma causing extensive damage. Succeeding on the check uncovers one useful component from the creature, per the chart on the screen here. And if the character specified a particular component they are searching for, they find it if it exists. Otherwise, select randomly from the list. By the way, rangers examining their favorite enemy may treat any roll of nine or lower on this check as a 10. All right, how about finding useful stuff from plants. When a character decides they want to forage for useful plants, they first need to determine if there is anything useful in the area. This can involve one or more roles using various skills depending on the character's familiarity with the environment and what they wish to do. Now, characters can accomplish this independently or working together, and most characters will need to observe the area for signs or clues about what species of useful plants grow in that area, if any. Doing so requires one day of effort and can be accomplished in a few different ways. Now, intelligence nature is helpful for recalling written or spoken information about useful plants in the area. Things like local superstitions or oral histories would likewise fall into this category. Intelligence investigation is best for characters trying to discern what markings, growth, and other distinct features might mean for plants and their utility. And wisdom survival may be appropriate when observing the area to see what plants are avoided, indicating that may may be poisonous, or perhaps to see which plants attract wildlife, which may indicate that they have beneficial properties. Now, wisdom medicine can be used while looking specifically for medicinal herbs, though its utility is limited when looking for magical or poisonous plants. As with any situation, other skills may be applicable depending on what the characters are trying to find. Additionally, rangers, giving rangers some love today, in their favored terrain can treat any roll of nine or lower on this check as a 10, as they have unsurpassed knowledge of the area. And then you use this chart here on screen to adjudicate the result of the check. Basically, the higher their result, the better the chance of finding something useful. Now remember, all these charts and the detailed rules I'm going over are all contained in the Reimagining the Bounty of the Land rule set. So if you'd like to pick them up, the very best way to do so is by becoming a $15 or higher DM layer 
a patron because in the month of August, you'll get them for free along with your other patron benefits. And what are those benefits, you might ask? Well, first, you're going to get two issues of Lair Magazine instantly, each packed with 5e adventures, digital maps for online play, and lots of other Dungeon Master resources such as new monsters, magic items, puzzles, traps, and more. I also run D&D games for my patrons, and we have monthly video hangouts. There's a link down below where you can learn more and become a patron. Number two, harvesting components. I mean, we talked about finding and locating the components, whether on monsters or plants, but you then have to get them out and keep them in a usable and not destroyed state. All right, let's hit monsters first. Once the characters have determined what useful components they may be able to harvest from the felled creature, they may attempt to extract them. Now, often this is a complicated process that requires at least one hour, though complicated corpses may even take a full day. Even seemingly simple tasks, such as collecting the goo of an ooze, are complicated by the various sinews and skins that creature has. When a character is prepared to begin harvesting a creature, they should select from the following skills. They could use dexterity, sleight of hand, to properly guide a tool through the harvesting process without damaging anything. Or they might use intelligence investigation to determine how the object is attached to or interacting with the rest of the corpse. Intelligence nature can be used to discern the optimal approach based on the character's background knowledge. And wisdom survival is a viable alternative to making a dexterity sleight of hand check. Wisdom animal handling may be used as well, particularly if the creature was a beast or was beast-like. Now, the DC to successfully harvest a creature is equal to 10 plus the creature's challenge rating with a maximum of 30. If the character fails the check the first time, they may make a second check using a different skill option. If the character succeeds the second time, they harvest the target component, but they have disadvantage on all checks made to use it, and it is worth half as much gold if sold. All right, getting stuff from plants. <laughs> Once the characters have located plants that may be useful, the next thing they will need to do is attempting to harvest them. Now, harvesting plants requires a full day's work, accounting for traveling to the plants, preparing the relevant tools, and the actual act of harvesting. It also accounts for time spent gathering the plants after the harvest is done, and the time it takes to avoid making costly mistakes that damage the plants. The plant's rarity determines the difficulty of harvesting it, as the rarer the plant is, typically the more fragile it is. When preparing to harvest plants, characters should select one of the following options. They could use dexterity, sleight of hand, if they intend to use a knife to cut the plant carefully. They might use dexterity or wisdom herbalism kit if they want to use the specialized tools in an herbalism kit to collect the harvest. The character can choose either ability score so long as they are proficient with the herbalism kit. Intelligence nature could be used if the character wants to use the technical information they have learned to attempt to harvest their finds. And wisdom survival if the character wants to use their intrinsic knowledge of the flora to harvest it properly. Then you simply use this chart right here on the screen to determine the difficulty of harvesting the plants based on their rarity. If the characters succeed, they harvest the number of plants they found. If the characters fail to successfully harvest the plants they located, they may make a second attempt. This second attempt must use a different skill option than they used on their first attempt. And if the second attempt succeeds, the character only harvests half the number of plants they found rounded up. I always round up, right? Actually, usually in D&D rules, you round down. We're gonna round up. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna give you more. Hey, we're special. By the way, if you're finding this information useful, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment for the algorithm down below. Let YouTube know which D&D monsters are the most likely to contain bacon for harvesting. I wanna see how many people put pigs. <laughs> d d d d come on, let's go. Everybody knows you get bacon from pigs, but there are other sources of bacon in this world. Number three, crafting useful stuff. I mean, why are we pulling out monster parts and wasting our time gathering stuff from plants if we can't actually create something cool and useful with it. So, once the characters have obtained a variety of crafting materials from the world, it is only natural that they're gonna wanna see what they can use them for. Doing so is a heavily involved task requiring significant concentration, gold, and time. Even the simplest items can take a week to craft, though making several of them simultaneously is often possible. Crafting items takes at least one work week of dedicated effort and an amount of gold per week determined by the rarity of the target item per the chart on screen now. Spending more gold, 
such as to get higher quality supplies will increase the chances of success. The increase in gold must of course be multiplied by the number of work weeks spent crafting that item. Additionally, the character must have a relevant tool proficiency and a matching set of tools to craft the target item. Imagine tool proficiencies actually being used in the game. Finally, the character must expend ingredients per the item's recipe. Mm, recipe. Each week the character works on crafting, they will make three skill checks. We'll get back to the recipe part in a second too, by the way. And the results of these skill checks determine if they advance in their efforts to craft the item. First, they will make a tool check and then they will make two additional skill checks with any skill of the character's choice. Of course, the game master should always ensure that they are relevant to the item being crafted. How successful the character is in advancing the crafting process is determined by the number of successes and failures they have across all three checks. If they get zero failures on that week's checks for crafting that item, the time spent crafting has been an unmitigated success. Progress accelerated beyond what was initially hoped for, allowing double the typical progress to complete. Additionally, if there is still time left in the creation process, the character has advantage on one future check of their choice to craft the same item. If they get one failure, the week passed mainly uneventfully. If this was the last week until the item was done being created, the item is complete. Otherwise, progress advances by one week. If they get two failures on their checks, the week was almost unsalvageable. While crafting the item itself wasn't set back, the ingredients were destroyed and must be obtained again. So you gotta pay more gold again for that week that you just used. And if they have three failures, the attempt at crafting went terribly wrong. The ingredients were destroyed and progress on the overall crafting was set back by 50%. That's not, that's not good. Don't, don't get three failures. It's not good. Okay, crafting recipes. I mentioned this before, now we're gonna talk a little bit more about what these are. Naturally, your players will want to know what exactly they can craft with the plants and monster parts that they are harvesting. The possibilities there are endless and limited only by your imagination. I suggest creating a handful of different recipes that you can use on the fly when it comes up. But you're probably also going to need to improvise at the game table. You might also just ask your players what they think or require that their characters spend downtime researching crafting recipes. All of these are fair approaches in my opinion. Now in our foraging, hunting, and crafting system, we do compile some sample crafting recipes to help you out, but our lists are far from exhaustive. Individual dungeon masters are definitely going to want to spend some time imagining what recipes for cool items and magical things might be and what kind of plants and monster parts might serve as components for them. Number four selling the bounty. I mean, it's distinctly possible that the characters will forego using the plants or creatures they harvest themselves and sell them instead to an experienced craftsperson or trader for an adequate sum of gold. Now, you could use the rules for selling magic items as downtime in Xanathar's Guide when the characters attempt to do so. However, you can also use these two charts on screen to guide you as well. They suggest base prices based on the rarity of the plant or the challenge rating of the creature killed. Click on the screen right here to learn how to use animal sidekicks in your game or right over here to become a DLMAR patron, get our new foraging, hunting, and crafting rule set, get an issue of Lair Magazine every month, and play D&D with me. And until next time, harvesting every single organ from every monster you kill, that, that sounds like fun.